Welcome, everybody. Let's pray first, please. We thank you, our Father in heaven, that we have the ability to be present, that we have the ability to worship God, that we have the ability to know which is right in the world that we live in today. And we thank you for the deeper truths of God that carry us into the very bosom of the Father. And we pray that you will bless each one as they stir up their pure minds and that you will touch their hearts deeply and tenderly and that the Word of God will have free course within them. Uh, we say thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been studying for a number of Sundays a uh, faith that can change the world. Uh, that, <laughs> that I would call dynamic faith. Uh, faith that can change the world. We have been dealing with many aspects of faith. Uh, last Lord's Day, we dealt with faith as a fruit of the Spirit. And we are, we're showing that faith is like a beautiful diamond. It has so many faucets uh, to pour light through. And we are praying, and I, I was praying again this morning. I said, Lord, I, I don't want just to fill our heads full of this thing. Uh, if, if we teach this and then, then we have no more faith than we had before, all of our teaching is in vain. Uh, we teach this in order to generate life. We teach this that you and I might say, say, God, I want more of this thing called faith. And to understand that faith does not have the mysterious element with it. I grew up believing that uh, very few people had faith and that I was one, that, one of the ones that didn't have it. And I thought that you almost had to go back to the Bible to find it. You'd have to go back and look for Abraham or a Moses or David or somebody in order to find this miraculous type of faith. And then I discovered that it's unbelief that can keep you from having it and that it is doubt that holds it back from you and that if you can release the life of God within you, then the potential of faith begins to come out through us. And so we are praying that uh, during these faith lessons, and really we're just getting into them strong, the next several Sundays will be the strongest elements of faith, really, uh, that you will say, I'm getting a hold of this thing called faith. Now, I know that it's inexhaustible, that just about the time you say, man, I've got this thing in my hand, uh, somebody ups and gives a new lesson on it, and you say, never heard that before. And, and uh, just about the time you think you know all about it, then somebody teaches you something new about it. So we have to keep our hearts open relative to faith and use what we have. Don't wait for more. What'd you say? <laughs> the, the, the secret of growth is using what you have. If you're going to wait to get a certain amount of it uh, before you use it, you won't ever have much of it. Uh, faith grows by using. I know that Abraham had faith because he used what he had every day. And by using what he had, then he had more. In fact, that's one of the ways to make faith grow is to use what you have and don't hide it. Don't hide it anywhere, but let it come out in you. Who wants more faith? I believe that universally in our hearts, we want more of this thing that we call faith. Uh, faith that commands, faith that demands, faith that marches like an army. A faith that has no fears related to it. A faith that looks at the horizon and says, I'm coming after you. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't aim at the backyard fence. He, he's shooting high. And we're praying that faith in our lives, your life, my life, uh, will grow and increase and mature and that God will be pleased with us. Today's lesson in faith is relative to faith as a sign gift. Uh, this takes us into an element of faith that if you have been in our classes uh, for our gifts of the Spirit, you're already acquainted with. How many have been in a class on the gifts of the Spirit? Let's see your hand. I see. How many have not been in a class on the gifts of the Spirit? Let's see your hand. Uh -huh. that, that is most of us. Uh, if we could get into these classes and learn some of the vital truths, truths that can change our lives, uh, we'd be different. We'd have to be different because it's the truth that sets us free. Can you say Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and in verse 9, uh, in verses 8 and 9, you're given the, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 9, it says, To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And so enumerated 
among the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, enumerated among those gifts is a sign gift called faith. Now, this sign gift of faith is the opposite of the sign gift of the working of miracles that we have in the Word of God. It is a complete opposite of that. And the, the, the sign gift of faith is completely different from any aspect of faith that we have studied so far, or that we ever will study. Uh, the sign gift of faith means that God within your heart will cause you to know that you can do things, and you put forth no human effort to do it, but that God does it for you, for you, and it is a function of faith. Mr. Howard Carter, that I lived with for a great number of years, and had direct relationships with for many, for many years, uh, was the one that gave birth to these gifts. Uh, he, he was the one that brought the truth to light. Uh, before his time, they were completely misunderstood. Uh, they, they would say that, well, uh, to have the, uh, the gift of the word of wisdom means that you were clever, that, that uh, the one who had it the greatest was Solomon. And yet, in the Bible, we find that Solomon had no gift of the Spirit at all, he lived a very carnal, natural life and almost lost his soul because he married so many heathen women. He was almost worshiping idols before he died. And so he, he was not dominated by any spiritual gift. And so it does not mean uh, an intellectual capacity. It has no relationship uh, to that. And the, the teaching world, including the full gospel people, made all the gifts of the Spirit a natural thing. And God revealed to this man while he was in prison as a conscientious objector in England, that the gifts of the Spirit were all a spiritual and supernatural phenomena. Beyond man's hearing, beyond man's seeing, uh, beyond man's feeling, that they were gifts of endowment unto God. And those gifts functioned through him. And while he was there in prison, this is the way one of them functioned that we are dealing with today, the gift of, of the sign gift of faith. They put him in a small cell uh, I mean, he could, had no way to get around. And they did it out of anger because he was a spiritual person and a religious person and was reading his Bible every opportunity he had, and even late at night, was reading his Bible. And the prison guards, you know, they hated him because of this. But he was so oblivious of this because he had just recently been saved and he had come out of a very wealthy family that had lived all the world had to give and that didn't satisfy him. And so he was just drinking in the Word just tremendously drinking it in. And so what other people did to him didn't bother him. But in his cell that he was, the, the ceiling was concrete. And I guess during the bombing and so forth, it cracked and water came through and it hit him in the head. And he couldn't get out of the way of it. I mean, his cell was so small, he, he couldn't move and escape the water. And he said, finally, the drops of water was like a, a hammer, co-op, co-op, as if it was killing him. And so he said, uh, Lord, would you stop the water, please? And the Lord said, you stop it. Well, he says, uh, I can't stop it. And the Lord said, yes, you can stop it. He says, now, just how can I stop it? He says, you can speak to the water. And then he says, he chuckled. <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, yeah, speak to the water. And the Lord says, if you speak to the water, it'll obey. Yeah, he says, yes, it'll obey. But after a few more drops in his head, he said, I better try it at least. It's hurting so bad. And so lying there on his bed with the water dripping down on his head until he was almost insane, he spoke to the water. He said, water, you go that away. And he said from the tip of his nose right straight up to the ceiling, it just backed up and went that away. And he said for the duration of the war, not one time more uh, did that water leak down onto his head. And so God was formulating this gift in his heart, was showing him what it meant that in the gift of faith, in the gift of faith, that you do nothing, and God does it for you. Now, this is a, a rare element of faith. Uh, when, when we will be studying uh, the faith that was in Abraham's life, it was a walking, it will be a walking faith, that this faith was a journey. It was a walking faith. There was action related to it. When you find faith in Moses' life, it was a faith that related to the willpower very strong. Uh, he spoke to the queen of that uh, land of Egypt and said, I am not your son, and I refuse to be called your son. 
I am an Israelite, and I'm going to go live with my people. Now, the Bible said that was an act of faith, but it was a vocal one that had to do with the decision he was making to walk out of a palace and live with people that were in very bad shape, uh, miserable shape. They were slaves. And he made a decision uh, to live with slaves rather than to live with the royalty. Uh, it would take faith to cause you to make a decision like that. Uh, it would take real faith to, uh, to, to do that. But this faith that we're talking about here as a signed gift, you actually uh, do nothing. You, you, you do nothing. If, for example, it was tremendously uh, accentuated in, in the life of, of Daniel. In the life of Daniel, uh, he was put in a lion's den. Now, he was not put in a lion's den because he stole money, although he was the prime minister of the country. He was not put in the lion's den because he had played politics under the table, uh, which he could have done very easily being the prime minister. He was put in the lion's den because some enemies of his had a law passed that he didn't know about until after it was passed. That anybody that prayed to anybody except the king would have to go in the lion's den. So when he heard about it, Rather than going into a prayer closet, <laughs> he wouldn't open up the windows. Want to be sure nobody missed it. He wouldn't open up the windows and stuck his head out and begin to pray. That was just a little audacious. But you know, faith is audacious. Faith, faith will do that that people don't expect every time. Faith will just reach out and do things and say, oh, oh. Because that's what faith is. Faith is different from what other people have. When you've got faith, remember others don't have it. And, and so faith is a commodity that your neighbors don't have yet. You say, how do you know? Well, the Bible says all people don't have faith. And, you, and the more you study it, the, the more you find out that's true. Can you say amen? And he went and prayed unto the God of heaven. So his enemies ran and told the king, he said, now we found somebody that's not praying to you. He says, well, who is it? He says, it's that man you love very much named Daniel, but you've already passed the law and you can't go against your own law or you wouldn't be king. Don't the devil get you in the close places sometimes, you know? And so he said, yeah, that's right. And so they took his best friend, Daniel, put him in a den of lions. And that king just knew that he wouldn't last five seconds. Those lions hadn't been fed recently. They were, they were furious lions, and they were executors. That's what they were there for. All the king's enemies were dumped in there. And the lions just said, you know, a good time. And uh, so they dropped Daniel in there. But, but as Daniel went into there, they didn't hear any chomp, chomp, chomp. They said, it sounds a little different down there. And, and somebody peeked in and he says, you know, all the lions are lying down. Is that right? Not standing up. Not, yeah, they're all lying down. And he says, I see Daniel lying in the middle of them. In the middle of the lion? Oh, yeah. In fact, I heard him say, put your paw over a little closer so it's make a better pillow. He says, that sounds a little different for lion's dens. And, and, and there he was, all night long with the lions. The next morning, the king ran out and says, Daniel, are you there? Now, he knew that nobody else would be there. If they were put in there, he knew that'd be the end of them. Uh, Daniel, are you really there? Oh, yeah, I'm here, ready for office right now. And, and so they, they pulled him back up. Now, what did this? Daniel was a man of faith. A faith in such an extraordinary way that he knew that God could deliver him even from a mouth of a lion. Now, you've got to know that. You see, you've got to know that. And if you don't know it, then it's not functioning. If there's fear, it's not functioning. If there's apprehension, it's not functioning. You can be in the severest places and have complete contentment. You can have complete rest because you know that you know. And that's the thing we're talking about. It's called faith at that point. And so during the night, uh, this man Daniel would punch a line in the, in the ribs and say, shut up, you're snoring. And I've got to get my rest tonight. And went right ahead and had a beautiful night's rest. And the next day, the, his enemies were put in there. The king said, we'll turn this thing around. And they threw his enemies in there, and they were all devoured that day. The whole bunch were devoured by these wild beasts that were in the pit uh, that, they, that was a point of execution for the king of Babylon. But here was a man that exercised nothing but just sure trust. That's a good word for faith. Uh, just trust. Now, now, you may not have to face a four-footed lion, but there are two-footed ones around. 
and you just may have to face some of them. And you've got to decide now how you're going to face them. Are, are you going to have a dominating power, a dominating strength that will say, lie down, be at peace, be calm. And some of the two-footed lions are more ferocious than the four-footed ones. But you can come into a place in God and power that you dominate. If you know it, say amen. We were up near Tibet a number of years ago on muleback. And uh, it was a, it was a, if we hadn't had a lot of missionaries to visit up there, I'm sure we never would have gone. Because uh, Chiang Kai-shek had just about lost the war. And the communists were uh, marauding the whole country. We saw whole villages that were slain. I, I mean, there was nobody left in them. And there would be pools of blood twice the size of a grand piano where they just chopped all the heads off there at one place. And, and the village was gone. And so it was a bad state of affairs uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the backside of China. As we were going along one day, we were captured by, by bandits. We really don't know what they were. They could have been generals in the communist army for all we knew, but they wouldn't tell you that. But they just stepped right out of the bush. You see, they, they had no cars up in that part of the world. All they had was a mule path. And we were on the mule path, you know, about, about twice the width of a mule. And uh, mules could pass on the path. And so uh, we were on the mule path, and they just stepped right out of the dense forest of the jungle there and just threw their guns on us and said, get off those animals. And uh, our interpreter said, they said, get off. And so we got off the animals. They said, march. So the animals came behind us. We had 17 mules, and we were marched in front. And behind me was a little old thin guy uh, with the longest gun I'd ever seen, looked like one of those Tennessee guns. And it was so old until it, I don't know how old that thing was. And he put it about that far from the back of my head, and he was just marching. And I said, God, don't let him stump his toe, make a mistake. And, and uh, it's, just, it's an awful feeling. And 30 minutes was t terrible, and an hour was worse, and an hour and a half was bad, and, and two hours was a calamity, and, and they had been there three hours now. And I just got mad inside. I said, Lord, I'm tired of that guy pointing that gun at me back there. And I said, I want to know something, God. Did I come up here to die? In my heart, the Lord said, no. Well, I said, then let's get that gun down then. And the Lord says, just go ahead and do it. And I said, how? He said, Revelation 19 and 6. So I reached in my pocket and pulled out a testament, and I read Revelation 19 and 6. And it said, it sounded like the voice of many waters, cataracts. It sounded the voice of many people, multitudes. They were all saying, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And then something hit me right down there. Whoo! I said, Lord, if you reign, he doesn't. And I said, if you're on the throne, he isn't. And I turned right around, and I laughed in that, in that Chinaman's face. I laughed in his face as loud as I could. And he just glared at me. He didn't know what to do. And his gun just went toward the ground, just, just turned down toward the ground. I called my interpreter. I said, and right up in his nose, I said, now what do you want? And he said, we don't have any money. I said, give him some. One of our dollars was about 2,300 of those, and, and we carried it in a box. And I said, give him a handful of it. And I said, what else you want? He said, we're hungry. I said, give him food. We carried that in boxes, too. And I said, now, if you've got what you want, stand aside. We're going to ride. We're tired of walking. And they walked into the bush, and, and we're gone. And we went on into the next town. And we got there. The whole town was shaking. They said, how did you get here? I said, down the, down the path. What do you mean? He said, everybody tried to come down that path today, got killed. I said, how'd you get through? Well, I said, we just got through, is all. And they, they said, but did you find any men? I said, yes. Did they have guns? Yes. He says, you know what? You needed, they needed everything you have. They needed your mules to ride on. They needed your food to eat. They needed your money to spend. They needed everything you had. And I says, they, 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 they should have killed you. I says, oh, no. Oh, no. Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You see. But now when you can come with complete peace with God and you do nothing about it. Now if God had suddenly given me a machine gun, I'd have turned around and, and caused those three men to, you know, to die. 
that would have been a miracle, of course, you see. But this is not miracle we're talking about. I, I told you that the gift of, of faith here is a direct opposite of the working of miracles. Because when it's, when it's called a miracle, that's God working inside of you. You see, that's God working inside of you. Uh, that's doing something through you. But when it's a gift of faith, that's God working for you. And, and between the two, I'd just as soon have him work for me. Not, not that I'm lazy, but uh, it's, a, it's a greater function when, when God does it and you watch him do it. Now, that's what we mean by being more than conquerors. Now, a conqueror is a person that meets equal strength and he wins. Then he's a conqueror. But more than a conqueror is when you do nothing and you still win. Well, being from the South, we all like it that way the best, you know. Just do nothing and still win. There are two or three of you from down that way. That's all right. There is a place in God where he, he does the fighting and we do the rejoicing. He is the captain of our salvation. And the captain is a, is a warrior that goes out in front and, and wins for you. God wants you and me to understand all the faucets of this glorious thing that we call faith and that for us to start developing it in our lives. Now, you live in a materialistic world that does not accept faith. Everything in this world that functions today functions, you might say, outside of what we're talking about today. And if your life is going to be engulfed with the things of this world and with the ideas of this world and really uh, with the trusts of this world, what you're going to trust in. If you're going to trust in your mind, you're going to get outside the gifts of the Spirit and outside of this thing called faith. And if you're going to trust in your own strength, then you're going to be functioning and operating outside of what we're talking about. We're talking about the, the supernatural of God functioning in our natural lives, making supernatural things happen in natural lives. And we want God to function in our lives. And one of the ways for God to function is through faith. And though faith has many faucets, and there are many aspects of faith, one of them is the sign gift, where God does astounding things for us, and we don't do anything ourselves personally, because God does them for us. Now, you can cause these things to function in your life. You say you can cause the gifts of the Spirit to function? Yes. The Word says if you desire spiritual gifts, you shall receive them. It says if you shall seek spiritual gifts, you can have them. If you are, are jealous or zealous of spiritual gifts, they can come unto you. Those are the actual words of 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 that you can read for yourself and discover that if you'll put your heart to these things and, and you'll stop, you know, giving our whole time to natural things, uh, to the things that are of the flesh and to the things of a human person. And if you'll give yourself entirely over to the things that are spiritual, you can grow in these things. And when God gives you a thing so great as this thing called uh, the sign gift of faith, Maybe it's the greatest of the nine gifts of the Spirit. And it is, some faith will function in every Christian heart. God has given every one of us a measure of faith. So there's no problem there. Now, the only thing that we want you to do is to take it and don't hide it. We want you to let that thing mature and grow. And it could be that you can move into an element where you can also have the sign gift of faith. There a thousand other aspects of faith. This is only one of them that we're dealing with today. And you can have this, this part of faith to function in your life. And if you do, it will demonstrate itself in many other ways also. This will not be the only way that it will be demonstrated, but this is one of its functions. Faith functions in a sign gift. As in our last lesson, I showed you that it functions as a fruit. And, and that is so different from this one. As a fruit, it functions as a bud. And then it comes forth and blossoms. And then it brings forth a fruit. And the fruit is not ripe. The fruit matures until it is ripe. And then it is enjoyed. Now, faith is that also. But also, faith is a sign gift to where God can do amazing things for you. And you don't have to do anything about it at all. It flows out from you, the spirit of the living God, and performs things that could never be done were it not for the power of God functioning through you. And that's where you say, Lord, I believe for it. 